Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a polynomial expression. Given that x equals square root of 2 plus 1, what is the value of x to the fifth power minus 29 times x? I'll be presenting two methods, even though there's more than two methods to approach this problem. Maybe I'll just briefly talk about the third one. Let's start with the first method. For the first method, I'm going to do the following. Just substitute x. So since x is given as square root of 2 plus 1, I can go ahead and evaluate this expression by plugging in square root of 2 plus 1 for x. And then obviously for square root of 2 plus 1 to the fifth power, we do need the binomial theorem. So let's go ahead and quickly remember what it looked like for the fifth power. So if you have a plus b to the fifth power, it's going to be a to the fifth plus 5a to the fourth b plus 10a cubed b squared plus 10a squared b cubed plus 5a b to the fourth power plus b to the fifth power. Notice the symmetry uh, in terms of powers and coefficients and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and use it with square root of 2 plus 1. So square root of 2 plus 1 to the fifth power is going to equal the following. Square root of 2 to the fifth power plus 5 times the square root of 2 to the fourth. Multiply by 1, so I don't really need to write it. B is 1, so we can totally ignore the values of B. Plus 10 times square root of 2 to the third. Plus 10 times square root of 2 to the second. Plus 5 times square root of 2 plus 1. V is 1, so B to the fifth power is also 1. Let's go ahead and simplify this first, and now we're going to subtract from it uh, 29 times square root of 2 plus 1. That part is easy. So now, how do you raise square root of 2 to the fifth power? You can square, square, and then multiply by root 2. That is going to give you 4 root 2. This is going to be 20. These are easy, so I'm just going to skip through those real quick. This is 20 root 2. This is going to be 20. This is 5 root 2, and this is 1. Now let's go ahead and simplify this by adding the radicals together and the integers together. So I have 20 plus 20 plus 1, that is 41. And then 20 plus 5 is 25, plus 4 is 29. And multiply by root 2. So this is the, this is the part where we raise square root of 2 plus 1 to the fifth power, but we've got to subtract something from it. So now we're going to do 41 plus 29 root 2 minus, minus, remember we're subtracting this part, 29 times root 2 plus 1. Let's go ahead and do it. 41 plus 29 root 2 minus 29 root 2 minus 29. There's a reason why 29 was given there. So go ahead and cancel those out. 21 minus, I mean, 41 minus 29 is equal to 12. So that will be our answer. All right. That is the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now for my second method, I'm going to use a different approach, of course. So suppose x equals square root of 2 plus 1. From here, I'd like to isolate the radical. And radical in this case is square root of 2. So let's go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. We're going to get x minus 1 equals square root of 2. Okay, why am I isolating the radical? Because I want to square both sides and get rid of the radical. So let's go ahead and do that. If you square x minus 1, you get x squared minus 2x plus 1, and square root of 2 squared is equal to 2. So here, for um, our purposes, I'm going to isolate the highest power. I'm going to use a polynomial approach. So add 2x and subtract 1. You're going to get x squared equals 2x plus 1. No, this is not a perfect square. If you put everything on the same side, it is going to be a quadratic though. So now, what am I going to do with this? Remember, our goal is to evaluate x to the fifth minus 29x. And we found the value uh, with the first method. But let's go ahead and see if we can find the same one with the second method. And then maybe we can briefly talk about the third one. So, I have x to the second power, and I do need to get to the fifth power. So why not just, you know, uh, keep expanding this? So, for example, I can do the following, right? I can go ahead and uh, evaluate x cubed from here, which is x squared times x. But x squared is given as 2x plus 1 from here. And just multiply by x. 
that is going to be 2x squared plus x but you can always replace x squared with something that's the beauty of this method so you can go ahead and replace x squared with 2x plus 1 again just keep doing it until you get a linear term and you get 5x plus 2 from here so remember this is x cubed so we got an expression for x cubed and x squared we do have an expression for x squared so why not multiply those together to get x to the fifth right x to the fifth is x cubed times x squared x cubed is 5x plus 2 and x squared is 2x plus 1. when you multiply these two things you get 10x squared plus 5x plus 4x which is 9x plus 2 and then you can basically replace x squared with what 2x plus 1 right all the time you can do that because they are equivalent and then if you go ahead and simplify this you're going to get 29x plus 12 but that is for x to the fifth power and what are we looking for we are looking for x to the fifth minus 29x so replace x to the fifth with this 20 oops couldn't write it nicely replace x to the fifth with 29x plus 12 and then minus 29x they cancel out and you end up with 12 as before or just think about it subtract 29x from both sides and this will imply x to the fifth minus 29x equals 12. you're just transferring one term from one side to the other so the answer is 12 again now what is the third method obviously i just want to before i get into brief talk about the third method i want to say something you could also take this x squared and just square it right we know that x squared is equal to 2x plus 1 you can go ahead and just square it so x to the fourth is going to be x squared squared which is 2x plus 1 squared and that'll be 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 and now you can replace x squared with 2x plus 1 again 4 times 2x plus 1 plus 4x plus 1 this is going to give you 8x plus 4x which is 12x 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. so this is x to the fourth and to get to x to the fifth you can go ahead and multiply this by x and the result is very similar and you'll get the same answer right okay great so that's just another approach for the second method maybe 2b or not 2b who knows now let's go ahead and briefly talk about the third method so i'm not going to go into the details but i just want to say once you find that x squared is equal to 2x plus 1 that means we have x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0 right so we have a quadratic whose roots are whatever and now we're trying to find the value of this and so i'm just going to assume that this has a constant value so let's go ahead and call that k and now the problem turns into the following we have a quintic which is a really nice name i like it but there's no quintic formula that's kind of sad but anyways set it equal to zero so these the roots of this equation are also roots of this equation why because it implies that so you can go ahead and um, check the criteria for this quintic to be divisible by the quadratic and you'll get the value of k as 12. and this brings us to the end of this video but thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.